Hello everybody, I'm here with an example of uh, particle kinetics uh, using um, second law to solve the problem, F equal MA. So here we have uh, a force exerted by the motor, uh, which is actually changing as a function of time, as you could see. So you could see that the function is a linear function and the force is increasing as a function of time. And at two and a half seconds, uh, it reaches 250 starting from zero. Okay, uh, so here we want to find the velocity of this 200 pound crate. So the weight of this guy is 200 pound. And when we're using the pound versus kilogram, you have to be really careful with the units. Uh, and I would uh, emphasize that as I show you this problem. So objective is to find um, velocity at t equal two and a half seconds. So you have to be careful with this problem, guys. So, and uh, the reason you have to be careful because you see this uh, crate is, is on the ground here and is at rest. So when you apply the force, when the motor is turned on and the force uh, increasing linearly, the tension in the cable, you uh, don't get the uh, crate A moving uh, instantly. In fact, we have to go and find out how long does it take for this to happen. If you draw a free body diagram, and say the tension or the force. So this is basically the force that is applied by the cable, which is the same force or the tension here. This is the same force here, right? So, and the weight of this guy is 200 pound, right? So we need actually the motor to give us a tension of 200 pound at least, or a little bit more than 200 pound for this crate to move. And you could see that the equation of this guy is simple. It's the slope is 250 over 2.5, right? So the slope is 10, uh, or rather 100, sorry. So the equation describing the tension or the force is equal to slope times T, and the, the intercept is zero. So when does this force equal 200? Because we need at least 200 for this. So this is T or, or F, by the way. So clearly that happens at two seconds. So now, uh, basically when you try to uh, solve for velocity, you need to find acceleration. So now if I uh, draw the free body diagram again and call this F or T, whatever, and this, this is the weight, be careful now. We say some of the forces in the Y direction equal MA. We pick this to be positive direction. Right, so we have F minus 200, right? F minus 200 equal mass. So be careful guys here, I'll put it in red. The mass is actually, should be converted to a slug. So you get it divided by G, gravitational acceleration, times acceleration. Now F is what? F is a function of time guys. F is 100 T, is not a constant, right? We have 200 over 32.2 times acceleration. So if we go ahead and solve uh, for acceleration in terms of time, or actually it's going to be a function of time, manipulate the equation, I mean in terms of cross, uh, cross uh, multiplication, and then you get 16t minus 32.2, okay? So this is now your acceleration which is changing with time since acceleration is the derivative of velocity remember in kinematics if acceleration is a function of time you have to uh, integrate acceleration and actually here we could put the limits of the integral if you want we know that uh, and the typical mistake by the way is that you say at t equals zero velocity is zero no up to two seconds, velocity is zero, okay? And then uh, if you plug in t equal 2.5 here, the question is what is velocity? And if we just do our integration, so the integral of this guy just becomes v minus zero, right? And then the acceleration is 16.1 t minus 32.2, 
integrated with respect to t and evaluated between two, not zero. See, that's the catch here. So the typical mistake is that you would put zero here, and that's wrong. So v uh, becomes 16.1 uh, divided by two, that's 8.05 t squared minus 32.2 t evaluated between two and two and a half. And I think the answer comes out to be about a little bit more than two seconds. In fact, 2.01 feet per second. And that's the answer. Okay, so you could have a force that is changing with time. And if uh, the force is not large enough to uh, start the motion, you have to figure out at what time the motion starts. And that's very important. And in this case, actually, the motion is started at t equal to two seconds. And then you just go ahead and find acceleration as a function of time, go through the integration process, and solve for velocity. As always, thank, thank you for watching and listening.